Hey, everybody, welcome back to Ask an Action Coach. And today we want to talk about a subject that's a little bit difficult for me to bring up. I mean, I don't know. Well, okay, it's difficult conversations, Jackie. We got to talk about difficult <laughs> conversations. Right, right. <laughs> and you're right. We have to have difficult conversations no matter what, whether it's in business, whether it's in our personal life, there's always situations where we need, to, where it's important to have a conversation with someone and for it to be honest as well. And that is always hard because, and so why is it hard? Why do you, why do you think that's, it's so hard for people? I think I, for me, it's because I go through the absolute worst possible outcome in my head before I even approach having the conversation. And so I've built up this giant what if scenario that could happen. And so it's like easier to just leave it alone and keep it in the box. <laughs> right, right. Sometimes, right. We mm -hmm. talk our, ourselves into saying, well, you know, it's not that important. I'll just for, forget it this time, right. Until it happens again and it happens again. So especially as business owners, you know, the honest converse, honest, difficult conversations are some are daunting. I know for me, um, I, I <laughs> the squirrel in my head, I keep having the conversation over and over and over. And like you, it gets bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger. And I'm more afraid, more afraid, more afraid. Mm -hmm. And then sometimes what happens is when I do it, oh, that wasn't so bad. Yep. Yep. You know, so part the the first step really in having an honest conversation with someone is not to accuse not to go you 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 and finger point right sure. this is how i'm feeling this is you know so it's all about it starts with all about i i'm feeling like this this happened and this is how I'm feeling versus you did this and you did that and you did this because part of this is you don't want someone to be on the defensive. You want someone to be open to hearing what's next, right? That totally reminds me of being above the point of power, you know, yes. above the point there is ownership and accountability and responsibility. And that's like being responsible for your own feelings. Right, right. Taking ownership. Of, and it's a choice. Part of this is all about a choice. We get to choose what happens. We get to choose how we think, how we act, and how we react. So if a conversation needs to take place, it's up to us to do it. And it's up to us to own how it makes us feel, right? So exactly. So the next step is, is accountability, right? Take and accountability. You mentioned it um, when we were talking offline. Was to take account, right? So we need to uh, hold ourselves accountable accountable for having the conversation in the first place, and hold ourselves accountable to making it a productive conversation, and not to let it sink to blame, excuses, denial, that kind of thing, right? right. So it's up to us to start the conversation. And the way you start a conversation like that is part of this is to think through it before you react, right? Mm -hmm. So one of the things that happened to me recently, I could have done it while I was not feeling my best in terms of I was angry, uh, you know, there was a lot of feelings happening. Mm -hmm. So what I chose to do and I've had plenty of conversations at the spur of the moment when the thing happens and usually they don't go well, <laughs> okay? So this last time I just chose to take a moment, take some time and to think about what I was feeling and to be able to articulate what I'm trying to say to get the result I'm looking for without all the emotion and the anger and things like that, just being able to have a conversation, right? Love that idea of taking a breath because I think I think now of difficult conversations as being sort of a gift that you're giving back and forth between the person you're having the conversation with. You're you're giving them your trust that they're going to be able to handle this conversation. And afterwards you have a better relationship with these people. Absolutely. Absolutely. And as owners, business owners, one of the things as business owners really consider what happens when you put off 
some of these crucial conversations or some of these kind what happens when you do that? Part of that is it affects the rest of the team. And I, I often think about the story about, you know, you have the top salesperson, for example, and that person isn't very nice. They're demanding. They're a lot of not good things, right? But they sell a lot. And, and so what hap- what's the effect a lot of times on the team? You think it's, it could be there. All right, fine. He, he or she is going to do what they do. And I'm going to sit here in, in the background and do what I do. Right. And our fear always comes to, well, they're the top salesperson, for example, or top producer. If I let them go, I lose a third of my business or a half, my half of my business. But there is a flip side to that. If that person chooses not to change the way they are and the way they interact with the team and that person is let go, for example, the team more than likely will raise up to fill the gap because they've been suppressing their gifts and talents because this person just to to get along, right? So you might be surprised that that the gifts and talents of the rest of the team rise up and you find out everybody becomes more productive. Mm -hmm. So I would encourage you as a first step to, to really consider having the crucial, the conversation, you know, you need to have with someone, but do it in a loving way right? Do it, do it. It may, you may have been hurt. You may have been a lot of things, but you, if you can do it in a loving way and giving it to, to someone in, in, as a gift, how might that turn out to be a win, win, win for everybody? That would be something I would want you to consider. I love that. You know, and I bet there's people out there who just talking or hearing about people having difficult conversations places in their mind a specific difficult conversation that they need to address right now. And this is the kind of relationship that having a conversation with a coach can do for you. It can hold you accountable to then have that conversation. And if you're out there and this is striking a chord with you, I think that means it's a good opportunity and time to have a conversation with a coach. So let us know. Click on the links associated with this video and we will set that up. So this has not been a difficult conversation, Jackie. (laughs) (laughs) It is not. And it has actually been a very um, good one and hopefully enlightening for everyone. We'll see you all next time. Bye.